which Ram heavy duty truck is the absolute best? Well, you've come to the right place because right here I have three brand new heavy duty Ram trucks. Over here, this blue one is a Cummins turbo diesel powered brand new 2023 Ram HD Rebel. In the center, I have a Hemi V8 powered version of the HD Rebel and of course the Ram Power Wagon. So I'm gonna take them on an off-road trail here in California near Big Bear Lake and we're gonna figure out which one is the best, which is one is my favorite and which one is your favorite. Ram invited me here to California to test all these new heavy duty trucks and they found just the right trail to take them on. So I'm gonna take this gas V8 Hemi powered Rebel HD on that trail first. I'm in four low. Uh, my rear axle is not currently locked, but I can use that locker. And I wanna see exactly how this newest truck in the REM lineup actually works off-road. And REM chose this terrain course to showcase the new truck. There are many differences, of course, between the Power Wagon and the Heavy Duty Rebel. Primary differences are in the front suspension system. And I'll talk you through it when I go over these obstacles. Obstacle number one in the gas-powered REM Heavy Duty Rebel. I'm gonna maintain some momentum through here. And there is some <laughs> undulations and a fairly intense, what, 18 degree climb. Wow, the articulation in the grip is tremendous. All right, take a look at the front suspension on the HD Rebel. You can see the Bilstein shock right there. You see the coil spring and you see this control arm that locates the front axle. But pay close attention to how the control arm connects to the axle there are two bolts and this is one of the main differences between the rebel and the power wagon yes they both use bilstein shocks but the power wagon is actually uh, has a little bit more height taller front end and way different front control arm this blue truck next to me is the power wagon let's look underneath it so and like like i was saying take a look at this control arm it's way different and there's basically three bolts here. Ram calls it Articulink front suspension attachment. Still Bilstein shock. The coil spring is taller, so it's one to two inches taller in the front than the Rebel. And this allows for a little bit more articulation, this design. So the Power Wagon is still king, at least in hardware for articulation. And we'll find out exactly how it behaves in this video. Of course, off-road trucks are all about tires. It's what hits the dirt and the rock and the pavement too. Um, in this case, the Heavy Duty Rebel launches with a 20 inch wheel. It's a pretty styled wheel, looks nice. And a Goodyear Wrangler Duratrack tire. But because of the 20, you don't have a huge amount of sidewall. Still a very aggressive tire. It's load range E, which means it's meant for heavy, heavy loads but it also means it's a little bit more stiff than maybe some other wheel tire combinations, which is why we also drove at some faster speeds off-road and on-road. And I gotta tell you, the suspension deals with highway beautifully on paved roads, very nice and smooth, even with no load. But on some slow sections, there's a bit of head toss. You can't really get rid of that easily in a heavy duty truck. Now let me show you all the camera systems at my disposal. So here in the central 12 inch display, I have that button for the camera on top and I can go through and I can select various camera views. It's also showing me the path of my wheels and tires and also here as well. So it looks like Ram is using a lot of the um, features in their arsenal that are also available and uh, have been available on the Power Wagon and they're adding it to this Rebel which I like to see. Of course, I can see on top of my bed. I also have a, um, an additional auxiliary trailer camera, but of course I'm not towing. I also have the new digital display as you've been kind of following here. And it's really configurable. There are five tiles. Uh, we aired down. Ram recommended about 40 PSI. 
Okay, so the second major obstacle here is this really articulated climb. And of course the camera is not going to show everything. It's going to flatten the terrain, but hopefully you can see kind of the angles I'm at. And of course I'm being spotted by Nina Barlow. So thank you, Nina. And actually with the rear locker enabled, and my front camera, uh, I'm pretty impressed. I mean, I thought I was gonna get a lot of wheel spin and try to struggle and use my RPM, but I am, my rear locker is enabled. I climbed that fairly, fairly steep hill and that was quite impressive actually. I didn't feel a loss of traction much at all. If you know HD Rams, you know this engine and it hasn't changed for 2023. It's a 6.4 liter. Hemi V8. It's fairly advanced engine, has cylinder deactivation, and it's as efficient as it can be. The rating is still 410 horsepower and 429 pound-feet of torque, and it's made it to an 8-speed ZF automatic transmission. But for heavy-duty off-roader, let me show you one issue inside. That's the fuel efficiency we got today. This is just an ad hoc view of this but over the last 256 miles a lot of it included idling of course and also off-roading and going super slow the gas engine um, is registering 9.1 mpg and it was full when we started and it says 160 miles left of range 159 miles left for the gasser and each truck was fully topped off this morning Let's take a look at the diesel rebel. You may hear that uh, diesel sound. Well, let me show you the numbers. This is basically part of what we drove today. It's registering currently also with idling and going slowly off-road, 14.7 MPG. But look at this, more than three quarters of the tank left and it says 300 miles left. So this is what you want for an overland heavy duty truck. You want range. So this truck delivers, in my opinion, as you can see here. Actually, most four-wheel drive Ram trucks these days have the hill descent control, and I do have that here, so I can select it. And I can uh, control its speed with the cruise control system. And I'm coming down. Right now it's set at 0.6 miles per hour, so I can actually increase that speed there with a gear selector to 1.8. And I'm actually not touching the brake pedal. And I should have enough clearance to make this turn. Of course, well, this is a crew cab with a shorter bed, which is six foot, four inch bed. But you know, I'm a little nervous with the 20 inch rim the wheel and the slightly lower profile tire because there's some rocks poking out on the sides and I don't want to curb rash or rock rash uh, one of these one of these uh, wheels they're fairly nice and expensive and now I think I'm gonna hang one tire in the air I've actually never been to Yaka Valley and also Big Bear Lake area but it doesn't matter because I have Onyx off-road maps app which I can also view using Apple CarPlay inside the truck as I'm driving and you can see me right there and I can study all the new trails and I can see the rating of each trail and I can also uh, see the distances and everything like that and I can download them because there's not a lot of reception here and uh, use them with no cell service. Check them out using the link below. TFL code gives you about 20% off Onyx off-road map subscription. Now it's another heavily articulated area. And my hill descent control system, you may be hearing the uh, anti-lock brakes coming on. So let me decrease the speed there. So you can kind of see, kind of see it right there. So the rear is articulating quite nicely. The front, of course, on the Rebel is not quite um, as our 
there's not quite as much articulation as on the power wagon and I'll show that to you in a bit so my verdict as I finish this course on a heavy-duty rebel with a gas v8 hemi engine is that it's mighty capable it's also as far as heavy-duty trucks are concerned relatively lightweight it has a lot of payload capability as I showed you it has almost 17,000 pounds of maximum towing capability and it's able to do everything you just saw here so yeah all those things combined uh, makes it for a quite capable truck now next up is the diesel powered Cummins powered heavy-duty rebel let's get to it and now this is a truck a lot of you have been asking for a heavy-duty Ram 2500 with a Cummins turbo diesel that's also a special off-road model well this is not a power wagon diesel but it is their HD rebel diesel I'm gonna run it second on the trail same trail so you can see the comparison and of course the biggest difference is the weight and capability so let me show you the numbers for payload and towing i'm standing next to the power wagon it's been on sale well for many many decades and in this iteration it's been on sale for several years um, let's look at the payload sticker 1210 pounds yes not a lot it's because the power wagon is focused on off-roading the springs are a little bit softer it has a towing rating of just over 10,000 pounds so some of those numbers may actually be in the half ton segment for a light duty truck but in this case it's on the power wagon so a lot of you of course wanted more capability off-road and more payload and towing which is why let's look at the rebel uh, let's look at this heavy duty rebel that number is sweet 2,940 pounds of payload in this four-wheel drive crew cab truck well this is why this truck is now is here because it combines better off-road capability than in the standard four-wheel drive but still payload and almost 17,000 pounds of maximum towing capacity this is exactly what you want in a heavy-duty truck uh, of course but what if you want more driving range what if you're carrying a camper on your truck and you want to go further off-road well get a Cummins diesel rebel this one has 1831 pounds of payload this is almost a fully option truck so yes you can find some Cummins powered rebels with slightly lower payload than this but you can find them also with higher payloads so yeah that payload number is not super super great but at least this is a super luxurious Laramie based pickup truck with lots of tech and lots of range and now the main event you have probably been waiting for this is the Cummins powered Ram heavy duty rebel because why is it the main event or at least part partially main event it's because the diesel engine has not been available in the power wagon at all it's all been 6.4 liter Hemi basically in the recent years so is this really the diesel power wagon that's the big question that everybody's asking so first there are some positives of having a diesel in a heavy-duty truck especially for off-roading you have lots of torque you also have lots of range because diesel um, is a little bit better on fuel and this truck is still showing 319 miles of range even after most of our day driving on highways and trails but there's a couple of negatives or at least one negative also and that is weight the diesel engine weighs a lot more than the gasoline v8 and it's not always it's not good i mean it's not good for most things you know just like my belly I'm pretty heavy uh, but when you're trying to pop over an obstacle off-road having lots and lots of weight on the front end especially with this diesel 6.7 liter straight six is not a great thing here I want to show you also the heavy duty rebel hood because it's unique it's brand new it has this simulated air intake not functional it's also got 
some extraction vents here on the side and it's got a big bulge. And underneath the bulge, in this case, it's a 6.7 liter straight six turbo diesel. And once again, uh, no tuning changes here for 2023. Uh, 370 horsepower, 850 pound-feet of torque. And backing up this engine, as you can see by this dipstick right here, is a 68 RFE six-speed automatic transmission. Uh, first obstacle was easy peasy. And I actually took it maybe a little slower because it's now I'm getting used to this trail. And I can kind of see where all of the obstacles are. So now I'm starting my second my second part and I'm trying to make it as difficult as possible for this puppy <laughs> and I think I think I'm succeeding it is it is difficult or maybe it's gravity trying to pull me back down this is almost 8,000 pounds of curb weight no it did it no big whoop Really the controls in the diesel powered truck are the same except for the transmission shifter. This, uh, the diesel is using the 68 RFE, six speed automatic. This is basically a Ram and Stellantis uh, transmission. Of course the gas truck uses eight speed ZF transmission and and the shifter is different but all the other features are the same hill descent control rear axle lock four low all that stuff so i'm gonna use my hill descent control system again i'm gonna set it to 1.2 miles per hour of course it still starts at 0 0.6 miles per hour and now i'm trying to judge the articulation and on the final obstacle, there's another chance for me to really get this truck into the air, at least with one or two tires. Um, and that's kind of the, um, the secret behind off-roading, especially the slow off-roading, is you want to keep as many tires on the ground as possible. And because tires is where traction is, and as, as, as far, um, if you keep more of them on the ground, the better. More time on the ground, that means better traction. That means you can um, get out of tighter situations, some you know, loose soil or snow or ice even. So I know that's why it's important. And of course the king of articulation is the power wagon. And that's next but this is the main event is it does it really feel confident um, on this terrain and the answer at least my for my first take is yes the Cummins powered Rim Rebel HD is it feels really good the only thing of course that I may change on this truck are I want a thicker, uh, I want more sidewall on the tire. That's the only, I guess, complaint I have about this truck because I'm still slightly worried about rubbing or curb rashing or rock rashing that 20 inch wheel. All right, so I hope you saw enough visually from this uh, particular trail run and next up is the off-road king of heavy-duty trucks well arguably uh, which is the power wagon and i'll explain why it's the king um, in a second you power wagon fans appreciate that it has a winch and this is one of the reasons why the power wagon doesn't have a turbo diesel engine because the turbo diesel has intercoolers that are hanging inside the bumper here down low and that diesel engine is quite large um, so the, this winch is also available on the heavy-duty gas-powered HD Rebels. But what's not available on the Rebel and the, what's here on the power wagon is also the front disconnecting sway bar. 
you could see that mechanism right there. And it allows way more articulation in the front, which you will see right now when I run it on that trail. All right, so here in the power wagon, of course, it's a gas powered truck. And I also have front locker, not just rear. Of course, I have four low and I have a sway bar disconnect. So I'm gonna try to engage that. It says it's in progress. Uh, it's also been aired down, this truck. So let me kind of roll a little bit. There, my sway bar is disconnected, four low enabled, and that's what really differentiates the power wagon from every other truck, really. Solid axles front and rear, lockers front and rear, selectable. Also disconnecting front sway bar for maximum articulation. And this is why for many, many years, the power wagon has been considered as uh, one of the kings of off-roading in heavy duty space, at least. And uh, I'll tell you what I wish I would change on the power wagon. I'll tell you that to you later. I'm currently not enabling my lockers. And I'm going very, very slowly. And you know what I'm feeling? I'm feeling like it's just a little bit more comfy. At least on this first obstacle. I think that's a function of disconnected front sway bar because it's kind of, it allows the axle a little bit more freedom. Um, and also the tires, that's a huge difference. Let's look at the power wagon tire. Uh, totally different setup, 17 inch wheel. This is a beadlock capable setup here on this luxury version of the power wagon. And it's still a Goodyear Wrangler tire. This is also a Duratrack, but the size is way different. 285, 70, R17. And it's a load range D. Take a look at this, load range D. So slightly lower load rating on this tire. It's a little bit more squishy. There is more sidewall. I mean, I do wish they would put a larger 35 on the power wagon. This is a 33 inch tall tire, but still as it is, this is uh, a really good tire for a heavy duty off-roader. So let me lock up here and see if that works all nice and easy. It says it's in progress, locked. Let me see if I can, if, if it's any different. And maybe I have a little bit more traction here, a little bit better articulation. I should. I'm making it super difficult. I'm gonna slow down. Oh. Sorry, I'm joking with Nina. Um, it's, uh, I don't want to call it boring, but it's um, super capable. There we have it. So that's the importance of having your tires really on the ground. Um, it's because it allows each tire to grip. You can go slower if you want, you still have control. And that's the beauty of this setup. Articulation really is king. Yes, you can um, go around articulation if you don't have as much. You can add brake distribution. You can catch a spinning tire in the air. Um, you can allow other tires to get grip, but there's no replacement for awesome articulation. While this video is focused on Ram Heavy Duty trucks, you might be wondering what else is out there? Well, Ford has the Super Duty trimmer package heavy duty truck and of course GM has a Silverado heavy duty Z71 and also uh, an off-road package on their Sierra heavy duty trucks and here's how I think the Rebel heavy duty stacks up um, it's an off-road capability I would put it slightly above the Z71 Chevrolet but slightly below the Tremor the Tremor is rolling on 35s it, it just has a little bit more clearance it has uh, some more off-road tech. That's my opinion. Of course, GM is planning to introduce ZR2 heavy-duty trucks and AT4X heavy-duty trucks, uh, but that's for another video next year because those trucks are not uh, haven't made their, their debut yet. 
and let's see how it behaves in this final articulation section. The first two climbs were super easy. And now, of course, I'm going up or down this final articulation section. Let's see what it looks like, especially from the rear. Let's see if I can hang that rear tire in the air or if it will be better. The rear axle in the Rebel and the Power Wagon, the setup is almost identical. Just the tires are different. I think it was a little bit in the air, but I'll let you be the judge. So, is the heavy duty rem Rebel diesel the king or is the Power Wagon still king? Well, I'm gonna have to call the Power Wagon still the best as far as ultimate performance for off-road. But my final verdict may be actually different as far as the truck I would pick out of all these for ultimate kind of heavy-duty off-road package. So let me tell you about that. Okay guys, so you saw all three of these trucks perform off-road. So which one is my favorite? Well, you know me, I'm a little bit more utility minded. I like to tow trailers like boats and campers on vacation and maybe some heavy equipment for Tumbleweed Ranch. I really like the diesel. But then I looked at the prices. So the HD Rebel starts at 67,000, about 300 bucks before destination charges. So figure about 69,000. But with options and the diesel engine, the blue truck you see behind me is 91,630 bucks. And this gas rebel is 81,290, about $10,000 separate them. Uh, wow, that's, that's uh, fairly expensive. Of course, the power wagon starts at about 70,000 and you can option it up to somewhere in a high $70,000 range as well. But which truck is my favorite? Well, it's actually not here. Uh, it's, it's actually a power wagon package on a tradesman, which is a more affordable way to get a power wagon. Basically, it's a work truck, crew cab, four wheel drive, ram, which is still continuing to be built with a power wagon package on top of it. And you can get it probably in the $550,000 or $60,000 range and still get a lot of off-road capability and a bit of trailer towing as well. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, go back to oldtfl.com for everything automotive, one-stop shop right there.